Welcome to Wheel It Fill It, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials discussing the fillet tool in depth, presented by the Demonic Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demonic Group. And in this installment, we'll take a look at the fillet property manager. There's a lot of different options and checkboxes and um, different settings that can be applied to the fillet tool. So uh, let's dive in and take a look at understanding them. So new in SolidWorks 2014, uh, the name of the fillet tool was changed. Previously, fillet was a constant radius, but now it's been renamed to constant size, likewise variable size um, instead of variable radius. The reason being is that SolidWorks added a new type of fillet, that's the conic fillet. Note that the profile of the fillet can now be changed. So a st standard radius fillet is using um, arcs to define the fillet, whereas the conic fillet tool uses conics to define the arc, and conics are sections of a cone. So what does this all amount to? Well, conic fillets are particularly um, enjoyed by industrial designers who appreciate the ability to change the shape of the fillet along its length. Here I've used the curvature comb tool, which shows the rate of change of the, the radius or the curvature across the fillet. So here we see with a constant radius, that curvature comb is identical. The radius is not changing along its length. But with a conic fillet, in this case defined by conic row, I can actually change the radius of this fillet. So the radius is, is increasing along its length here. So this creates a more of a pushed out kind of fillet that uh, designers sometimes choose to use. Here we can see the differences of the conic row factor. The higher the conic row, and now it's between zero, or I guess almost zero and um, almost one. So we hear the conic row, it pushes the fillet out, it punches it out more with a higher row value. And with a lower row value, it almost kind of smushes the fillet in. So here you can see the two two values. I personally don't like the look of this smushed in kind of row value, so I, if I am using the conic fillet tool, I'll try for a, a higher row value. Note that this makes your fillet look visually smaller, but it can kind of create a smoother blend uh, because there isn't that abrupt start of, of radius here. See that it actually is a little more consistent. Another option under the standard fillet is the setback fillet. So setback fillet offer additional options for corner treatments. Setback fillets can create a softer uh, kind of transition that might be more akin to sanding the shape in a wood block versus um, the standard fillet tool. So let's take a look at how we can use a setback fillet in SolidWorks. The key to setting up a setback fillet is to select the fillet tool and it's important to note that all three edges need to be selected at once and they need to come together at a common vertex. So let's say I wanted to add a three-quarter inch setback fillet here. And now under setback parameters I can select my setback vertice and I have to have all three sh or edges picked coming together at that vertice and now I can set the setback value say one inch and I'll hit set all. So that's kind of push the corner of the, the fillet back a little bit. And I can change the individual corners. See, I can say I could have two there, and I could have three there. Looks like it's not going to like that. It's a little bit too large. But you can see, now, if I did want to have different radiuses in my setback, instead of having all three edges at three-quarter inch, I could say multiple radius fillet. And then this brings out these little flags for the various edges and perhaps I want this uh, bottom edge to be an inch and a half. Once again I may need to adjust the setback values to to have the fillet complete. Let's just uh, go back to one inch on all of these and here we see the setback preview comes back. So it can be a little hit or miss. You may have to play around with the setback values but if that is the geometry I wanted to create, note that the setback always creates a large number of faces and there's a way we can clean that up and I'm going to jump to direct editing, grab delete face and I can use delete and fill, tangent fill. What this does is all of the faces I pick are removed from the model and it's going to generate a surface fill and if I click the tangent fill option it will make sure that that new patch is tangent to all the surrounding edges so hit OK. And there we go. So sometimes it can take a little while to build, or initially build, but the, the rebuild usually pretty quick. So uh, there's my 
complete a face, I went from six faces in the model to one face with the surface fill. So here we're seeing the three edges being required for selection and use the delete face tool with delete and fill to clean up the model. Another option on the constant radius or now constant size fill it tool is keep edge versus keep surface. So here I have a hole passing through this plate and if I keep edge note that it maintains the flat profile of this hole and the fill it's actually dipping down. If I select keep surface the edge of that uh, face is extended like the fillet tool does um, and the fillet it's constant all the way through. So two different options just uh, something to be aware of if the, the tool isn't giving the correct result you may need to try keep edge or keep surface. Another option of the fillet tool is round corners. So here if I have round corners turned on it actually is going to automatically round that corner off and transition it to that sharp edge here versus this is the, the selection of just us picking those four edges. So variable size fillets change in size along their length based on user specified inputs and now new in SOLIDWORKS uh, 2014 the variable size fillet also supports the conic tool so this allows me to create uh, shapes that are or fillets that are changing in size along their length. So when an edge is first selected, it's possible to select various points along its edge. So here if I'm picking this edge, I'll actually define the size of the fillet at say 50% along its path. And this is how uh, edges are controlled as percents along the path. But say I wanted to have a little more control. A workaround for this is to use the split line tool and split the face. What this does is generate new edges and I can precisely specify where I want that value instead of relying on percents along the edge. Another option in a variable radius is smooth versus straight transition. In a smooth transition the fillet tries to end normal to adjacent faces where the straight transition does not have that effect. So here we see this is more of a spline based shape and the straight transition gives us a straight line between the two different sizes of uh, radii in the fillet. And face fillets can create um, some kinds of fillets that aren't actually possible with the standard radius. Here I have an example of perhaps two ribs coming together in a boss. And if I were to fillet this one or these two edges here, I don't actually get the correct result. I need to specify a fillet that is built between two faces and not between an edge. So here I can specify the blue face and the pink face and the fillets built between them there's no way of actually adding a fillet of this size along uh, these two edges. I need to use the face fillet tool. Another nice option of face fillet tool that uh, designers like employing is the constant width fillet. So note that the, in the constant width fillet the size of the fillet looks the same even though the radius is changing along its length. Here we see the fillet's larger on the front of this shape than it is with the constant size fillet. So the constant width, the radius is changing, but it visually looks the same along its length, uh, something that can be advantageous or desired by, by industrial designers. Finally, the last fillet type is a full round fillet. And this allows you to round off geometry. In this instance, I've used it to add a smooth uh, fillet on this rib here. This is the handle of a um, food service product and I wanted this to be comfortable in the user's hand. So the full round fillet, another example of full round fillet is it almost builds a, a loft type geometry where I can um, select three fillets and a nice workaround is instead of I do need to pick three inputs the start, middle and end faces um, but to advance I can simply right click after each selection and it will automatically move the, um, the selection into the next box. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, installment of Will It Fill It? Please follow the Demani Group on LinkedIn where we'll be new announcing new filleting videos. Thanks.